Okay, so we've got all that ready and we're ready to put in some transistors. Now, I wrote down what I thought they were and I know what I'm going to be putting in and what I thought they were maybe was 2SC3198s and 2SA1266s but we had some weirdness with an MPSA06 over here uh, and, and they're, they're, the, the transistors I want to put in are different than what I took out uh, in if you read the data sheets on these and I may have misread these or something but these say emitter collector base on these with, with the base over here and what I'm wanting to put in is emitter base collector so I don't trust any of what I took out uh, because we had a blown power supply and we seen that somebody had done uh, some soldering hodgepodge and so what we can do is we can draw this and I will show you how to do it so we've got this little area so if we got our power connector that's negative and positive so we got two transistors over here one of them the board layout shows like this and the other the board layout shows like this so we're gonna have three terminals off each one alright so the first thing I want to do is without even going back to the chip I can take my oscilloscope and you can see up here uh, on the thing I can power this board up and I can probe each of these legs nothing nothing oh there's drive there's drive nothing and positive okay so we got drive here so that's got to be a base and we got positive right there so let's do the same thing on this one down here we got nothing drive mm, we got voltage nothing drive nothing so we got what voltage here yeah so we got power there and we know that's going to be the base and that's going to be the base so let me turn off my power supply so we can't wreck nothing so we know the bases are definitely in the middle well that didn't match up with those transistors that were in there we got positive here and positive here so this is how this totem pole is wired so we have two transistors and they join up like so and up here we're going to have B plus and we got a base here sorry it takes me a second to, to draw these should have that there and that there so <clears throat> this arrow the arrow always points towards the end if you know what a diode looks like on the schematic to the when I say the end I mean the negative so a diode points this way the arrow points this way this is the negative side that's the positive side so if we know that's an, a negative and this is a negative then we know this is a P and this is a P and we know this is a P and then this is going to be an N so this is the NPN transistor and this is the PNP transistor so these bases are tied together and they run to a resistor that runs to the pulse, pulse whoop, width modulation chip which is this little chip right here 
It could be this one's a, uh, a 3525, uh, an SG3525. It could be a uh, TL494, uh, TL594, uh, a KC7500, I think it is. Uh, you know, depending on what it is, that's where your things were. So we know the bases here have to be connected together and that's where we've seen our signals and on this one we got a positive well which one goes to the positive right here this NPN well our NPN is a 3904 so this has got to be a 3904 this one's got the positive on it this one's got to be a 3904 and so that makes this one our 3906 and 3906 now, a 3904 and a 3906, if I can find it here, flip back page, ignore the bottom half, a 3906 is EBC. this flipping pages for you guys. Wish I had some kind of creative whiteboard program. Okay, a 39 What do we say? 3906? <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I say this all right. 3906, the PNP That's this. PNP is an E B C So, uh, and that should, and the 3904 is going to be the same thing. E, B, C. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I tell you all this right. <clears throat> I'm at her base collector. So, if they're this way, emitter base collector. The emitter is always the one with the little thing, so this is emitter, base, collector. This is going to be emitter, base, collector. So on the, if this is our NPN, uh, this is our PNP, so the collector should be ground, and the emitter should be hooked to the emitter here. So that should go there to there. And then this is the collector. And that should be to B plus. So we can verify that with our multimeter. So we take our multimeter. Disconnect these power wires. I don't want them in the way. We put it on continuity. And the bases should be connected because the square waves go there, so we should get a beep when we touch the two middle base ones. We do. So if we touch these two emitters, we should get a beep. And we do. And so B plus, which is this leg on the thing, should be right here. Yeah. And then ground, which is that leg, should be here. And it is. And so we can discern that if that's the positive, if this is B plus on this one, that's the same as that one. So this one is going to be the uh, emitter and this one will be the emitter so those two over there should beep together yep the bases should be beep together yep and then this should be ground so let's go ground 
Yep. And then B plus right here. Yep. And so knowing how that little totem pole connects together uh, and this actually right here is where this goes out and goes through a resistor and goes to the uh, power supply fit. And so by being at B plus and ground and getting a signal one of these will turn on and off and that either turns on the fit or pulls it back down. So we know now that this pattern that's on this board fits these transistors perfectly. So I can put a 3906 I need to bend this middle leg out a little so we're just going to take it and we're going to bend it out and give it a nice little bend and we're going to install it in the right spot Oh, pardon me. It's about time for a snack. Now we're going to get another 3906. I hate these taped on here. Bend out our center leg a little. So that it goes in the holes just right. And we said 3906 should be here. get us some 3904s and do the same thing. And so all I'm going to do is bend these up, stick them in the right hole, and then solder them in, and I'll bring you right back. And then we'll test and see if we have good drive on the uh, sorry I'm, I'm a little space case tonight uh, if we have good drive on the uh, pads through the 47 ohm resistors and we're ready with if so we'll be ready to try uh, putting in some fits supply. Nothing crazy happened. That's good. Oop. We're going to get our oscilloscope and you can see it up here in the corner. We're going to press the button and we got a little power flowing and let's see on these pads there is a square wave, square wave, square wave, Square wave, square wave, square wave. All right. There it is on that one. That one. That one. That one. That one. And that one. <laughs> now, if we hadn't replaced these drive transistors, I'm going to kill the power to it. Uh, and you and, and and you'd taken some blown fets out, and let's say the uh, none of the none of the resistors had got screwed up, uh, so you thought it was maybe okay and the drive was okay. Um, you may not have good drive resist transistors; they may be leaking. Um, and there's a way to test that. You can do it with uh, capacitors from the gate to ground. Uh, but you have to know what that wave looks like. And so you kind of have to have a whatever size capacitor you use when you do that across there to load this circuit and make sure it looks right. You kind of got to know what your capacitor is going to look like uh, changing that wave. Because this is my caps that I use sometimes. Uh, 
are higher than the capacitance of the of the transistors, uh, so it almost turns my wave into a sawtooth. But if if they go flat or, or don't drive at all, then I know that the, the these need to be replaced. On this one, we had to replace them anyway, so I know that they're good. I know we're going to get good drive. We're seeing good square waves, so I am going to. Unhook this stuff. We're going to get some FETs. I got some 3205s. Oh. Did they stick them together? Yes, they did. That's not very fun of them. See, we need two, four, six, two, four, six. There we go. My end cap is still in the bag. So I did not, yeah, this is a brand new shipment that came in. I did not even check. I'm going to look. Cool. I got a two, two, this should be a stick of 50 and a stick of 50. They're all match date codes. So now I got me a, a hundred nice match date code power supply fits. And we will chuck, if you want to know what that part number that I order for them, it's just an IRF 3205. Oh, come on, focus. PBF. And uh, the PBF means PB is lead, and F means free, so it's a lead-free 3205. IRF 3205, lead-free. So I'm going to spend a little time forming the legs so that these all line up right. And, uh, oh, one last thing I want to show you that's going to be critical to this. So these have got banks. And... If you put your multimeter, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Oh, the dog goes needing out again. This tells you how long, the, uh, how many times I've been interrupted. If you go on the, not on the pad side where the transistor is, or where the where the FET's going to be, but on the back side here of the of the of these. Uh, paper out here so you got a FET's going to be here a FET's going to be here a FET's going to be here 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 and here so let's call these the FETs and you got these gate resistors going to them so what we want to do is we don't want to measure out here, we want to measure beforehand. And we're looking for a beep. So there's a beep. So you start with the end one here, right here. There's a beep. There's a beep. There's a beep. And there's a beep. And then I'm going to leave it on here, back here, and make sure that when I touch this one, it does not beep. And so. I'm not looking for a beep, 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 beep. So what that tells me is that on this amp, all these are connected together. And that right there, you know, that's that resistor, all the resistors for those FETs. So this side's a bank and that side's a bank. So all I need to test this is one FET here and one FET here. Now, when you do this, let's let's do another quick drawing. If we had a FET, a FET, a FET, a FET, a FET, and a FET, 
and they had their resistors and they had their resistors and you tested it from here to here and it beeped and here to here it beeped but it did not beep on those three you know that was connected 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 and then you could test here and if it beeped those you know those were connected and what that would be is these three would be one bank and those three would be the other bank whereas here we have six and six sometimes it's it's the front three and the back three or sometimes if you have multiple transformers let's say we had two there could be a bank here and here for the transformer coil over here and a, on a transformer coil over here could have three and three and so that's one way you can tell which sides the banks is by which ones are all interconnected all these are connected they all get driven the same all these are connected so I only need two to put in here to test to see if we get rail voltage and build up some voltage so I'm gonna like I said bend all these up and have them ready I will stick two in and we'll come back and we'll do some measuring before we stick all the rest in all right get my microphone down here sorry all right so we got power hooked up I hooked up the remote I'll make sure that doesn't get touched I'm going to turn on the power. We always watch the power up here. Do do do. And it should be at about 0 0.18, 0 0.179, 78, something like that. That's the remote for my radio, or that's the battery, the constant power for the memory connection on the radio with the little Alpine I use uh, for testing on my test bench. So we got our uh, scope probe. We're going to go ahead and clip it, because I've got my clip-on lead here, to the leg, and we're going to fire it up and see what happens. Okay, and you see that that signal went small. I'm going to turn up the intensity. You can see those little spikes. Let me get my pointer, or something to point with. Uh, here, I'll get... Uh, better view. So you see these spikes? I'm going to turn it off and watch. It's going to start out as a square wave, but it's going to shrink. It shrinks back down. That's because this is a, an SG3525 and it's regulated. <coughs> and so let's go over there. So this chip will fire up the power supply and charge the rail capacitors until it hits rail voltage. Once it does that, it actually dials back the pulse, which you've seen how little it got, uh, while it's not using uh, all that much energy. So it was just putting a tiniest pulse in there to keep the rail voltage up. So let's go on ahead and pull out the multimeter. And I've got on 200 volts. Could, we could gently set it right there so maybe you can see it, yeah. So I'm going to carefully put my probe on the negative and th this big bar and this big bar this bar has got the feeds these three fits and those three fits this bar jumps over all that and drops power all the way down here to these other or sorry, transistors. Let's use transistors on this one. So that one of these should be the positive rail and one should be the negative rail. So we're going to fire it up. You see it pulls some current. We're pulling 1.2 amps. And we're just going to touch this rail. And we get 34.2 volts. And we're going to touch this rail. And we get negative 35.4. So pretty even. Uh, within, uh, what, about a half a volt or so. I uh, didn't... I'm, I'm not sticking with the math there. Take this off. So it looks like we're producing power that way. Uh, let me put my specs on here. And I'm going to assume I got a pair of tra I got these are all diodes. So they're rectifying the square waves that have been increased on this side. And then it looks like I've got regulators here. Uh, they're not standard 79 or 78 regulators, but we're 
we're going to look on the backs of them when it's powered up. There's negative 40, negative 40, positive 40, and positive 40 on the back. If I look at this leg right here and that leg right there, negative 38. this one 14.2 13.7 negative 15 so this one's the negative 15 I'm gonna assume this is supposed to be the positive 15 <coughs> and then we've got 38 ish volts coming out of this one 37, negative 38, and the rails were 34, 35. So <coughs> these first two are probably producing my plus minus 15, and these are producing slightly higher. Uh, and there we go, they're going to be taking, see all these diodes, so we got a couple extra wines here. Uh, are going to be producing a slightly higher and slightly lower voltage to drive the transistor gates and uh, that's important on transistors compared to the way we do a lot of class D FETs and stuff uh, but even then there's there's things that have to be above rail or below rail voltage to adequately turn on the the, uh, the FETs so and that'll be for driving those so those looked okay this is the drive circuit uh, the only thing we would have left, I want to turn this off just so that we're careful, is we need to check, oh, I need to, might as well unplug these for a minute, bring this down so you can see. So we need to get to this side, because we could technically test this half of the amp, uh, and here is the end plate, and so it shows the inputs, we got the gain, subsonic and low pass frequency so let's turn the gain uh, so there's a problem our gain knobs toast our subsonic we're gonna turn all the way off our low pass we're gonna put in the middle and then this one is subsonic on and off. We're going to turn it off. Low pass on and off. We're going to leave it off. Q select 4-2. I don't know what that does. I'd have to read on it. And I guess that's Q base. That's their boost. And then uh, a plus dB. I don't know. I'd have to read about this amp specifically on here. But we got a gain problem. The gain knob just spins. So uh, we're going to have to unclip that. We're going to have to do a little work and replace this gain knob. I'll have to see what it is and see if I have one so that we can get my my little eye loop here. Oh, it's so got some dirt, dust, and debris on it. Let's see if we can clean that off there a little. I may have to take it out to uh, be able to read it. I'm going to go ahead and turn what my wife calls the fart machine, the fart gun, on. Oh, she just came out in the garage, too. She'll, she'll, she'll get to enjoy the fart gun. So, all right. There they are, looking for my glasses. We need to take this one out and see what it be. Uh, so I, we actually need the soldering iron to start out with here. Uh, the tabs on this are all bent over and I'm going to need either a really thin screwdriver, but better than that would be my X-Acto knife if I can find it. It was, oh, there it is. 
It was right here, and it is right here. So, we're going to get a little dab of solder. Let me show you what we're dealing with here. See the tabs there? See how they're all bent over? You ain't going to be able to get the solder sucker to, to raise those up very well. So we just need to get a little heat to them and get underneath. And actually, my flat blade may be better at this. And just get them raised up. A little bit so the solder sucker can get on it or the fart gun whichever you know if you're like my wife I don't want to pull a via. Let me get this back here. Yeah, there we go. All the legs are moving. Just got to wiggle her out. Oh, there she came out. All right, and so here's what we got. Says a uh, 15. Uh, come on, focus so I can read it. Well, I'll read it to you. It says 15A 103X2 TD. So the X2 is probably telling me that it's a dual. Uh, 103, maybe it's a 10K. Uh, and it's an A style, which A is musical. That's normally, normally gains linear. It's 15A. But we'll do a little Googling. I don't know that I'll have the right value, but we'll, we'll do some measurement. One thing you can do, we'll put it on 20K on the multimeter. Go outer leg to outer leg. We get 900. Now we get 8.5. 9. You shouldn't get anything to the middle leg, but you might. Nothing there because this, since it's broken and spinning around. That's showing up as looks like it's going to be a 10k. So I don't know if I have any 10ks. I'll double check that number, uh, and if I have to order one, I'll order one. I'll look around and see if I maybe have got a good one on. I've got another PPI amp that I'm going to be fixing. Uh, that I could maybe if it's got a good one of these on it I could just take it from it if I don't have the right one and we can uh, then I can order one and we can get ahead to fixing this but uh, if not through the magic of YouTube you guys will see me open up a new package or, or we'll figure something out so let me do a little searching and we'll be right back so 
so uh, I just went back in the recording because I wanted to double check because this uh, it's got an A on it and the A is for log or uh, audio and I <laughs> said in there linear on the pot and that is not true it's not linear it is log <coughs> if you look for a pot and it says log or it can say audio they mean the same thing um, it's it's a it's a curve uh, that coincides with how our human ear uh, closer to how our human ear actually hears music, and that's why they use that for the gain. Because uh, if they use just a linear gain, it would not sit, seem like you were turning it up linear. To to us, <laughs> to to the human ear, the log scale or the, or the audio same thing uh, sounds linear the volume goes up uh, and so that's why they use those for the game so I misquoted that I do not have this uh, and I cannot get it from any of my normal suppliers except for I had to go to, to all the way to DigiKey so it will be a magic YouTube thing uh, 